Okay, with the uh, we'll talk about a uh, negotiable instrument right quick. The uh, okay, I know the uh, the check paper. Okay, I remember I remember a while back on, on on one of the webinars, you took us to took us to a website where you get this the certified paper from. I mean, security paper from. Yeah, it, was, it was I used to use this uh, called Academy Systems. I think it's what it's called. Check paper. Let's see. Let's see. Learner Academy Systems. Is Academy Systems even around anymore? I don't know. Let me see. Uh, let me. There's a lot of people say check paper stock. All right. So what I would use. I used to use this paper right here. This is very good paper. It's rainbow paper. Um, you can you you really you can pick whatever you want. I mean, you know, it's it, it's a matter of preference. Um, I like this because a lot you know, there's a lot of good paper out there. You know, it's a lot of good paper out there. Different ADP obviously makes the best paper, but they only sell it to you if you have a uh, if you have some sort of account with them or something like that. But any of this paper that however you format your particular and we're going to go through the uh, International Bill of Exchange, but you can go through here and my preference I always use. You can use the paper at Office Depot. That's that's not a problem uh, that will work. But I, I like to kind of get some professional paper uh, sent to me. Um, I think it kind of makes a slight difference. When you order your paper from certain people as opposed to using all because everybody uses office depot shit and they when they see it it's like okay this is like some office depot shit even yeah, though like, you know <laughs> you know so you know but it's uh but it's all kind of uh paper i in the in the past what i would use is one of my favorite paper i had like about three different papers that i like but um i would use this one right here i really like this one I like um, it's the rainbow one. I had some of this too, but uh, it would be like this one right here. That would be the ones I would use. But you may uh, you may be able to you know find some different kinds. But uh, it's like I said, it's a preference thing. I can't really say what's the best because the best paper is ADP paper. Yeah, because right, I'm, but, yeah, cause I'm going back to the uh, to the long form. Cause, right. uh, you know, with, with that check paper, folks putting uh, route numbers and account numbers on them. So I want to. Yeah. Build you, and I'm going to talk a little bit about I got something. I'm going to talk about these bonds today. We're going to talk about some stuff today. So y'all pull up a seat and uh, get ready because we don't we're going to have some uh, really interesting. It's going to be an interesting class today. So uh, let me get to it. OK, I'm gonna, right. we're going to talk about all that. All right. All right. All right, everybody. Okay, if y'all remember last week, we talked about we talked about the certificate of non-response. So tonight, we're gonna talk about a notice of acceptance. We're gonna talk about notice of acceptance. Now, the first thing I want to say is that um, you know, you want all your documents to be like one page. You know, a lot of people be putting statutes in according to House Joint Resolution 192, June 5th, 1933, Public Law 73 10. You are required to, you don't need none of that. You just need to have something that's going to state what you're doing and, you know, and keep it short and to the point. And that's it. Okay. So today we're going to talk about a notice of acceptance and, uh, what also goes with a notice of acceptance is some process instructions. That's if you're doing a discharge, which is what we are doing. So we're going to talk a little bit about processing instructions too. So today we're going to do this is all this is about the notice of acceptance, what goes into that package and your first step. But we're, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to draft up our notice of acceptance. All right. Now, the first thing is, is the mailing address. OK, it is always mailed by the notary. Once again, the notary is doing this for you. All right. You're not doing it for yourself. Nothing comes back to you. Everything. The notary is a witness. The notary is your witness. There has to be a witness to all of this. So the notary 
the, the, I has to be able to say under penalty of perjury that I mailed this out and nothing came back to me. And that, and she can't do that if she got a return address for you. She don't have firsthand knowledge of anything. All right? She has her own P.O. box. Your notary should have their own P.O. box. If you're going to train a notary and have a notary do this for you, they, th that notary should have their own mailbox and everything that all this goes through. Does everybody understand what I'm saying? I'm hoping nobody is, is you know, all this matters, believe it or not. All this matters a great deal because we're talking about firsthand knowledge. Okay, how can a notary as a witness have firsthand knowledge of everything if you're using her and, and everything's coming back to you? Or if you're not using a notary at all, you don't even have a witness because you're not even using a notary. Where is the teeth in your process? Where is the teeth in your process? Okay, so you have to be able to use a, uh, use a notary, all right, and have that notary have the proper address. So we're going to look at this right now. <coughs> All right. Now, this part right here is important. Okay, you're going to see it's mailed by. Okay, who is it mailed by? All right, you're going to put your notary's name and the notary's address. All right, so Susan Smith, care of PO. Now, everybody said, well, can we use uh, address put it in brackets? Notary is in the public. All right. So you don't so too much have to worry about putting stuff in practice. You can do it. You know, I, I usually just do it just out of habit. But all that is not really going to be that impactful because it's a it's a notary public. OK, they're in the public already. All right. So this notary's information is going to be right here. All right. This is who it's mailed by. Mailed by the notary up here in the header. We want to put our well, since this is probably going to contain a your first package is going to have a is going to have a a negotiable instrument in it. All right, we want to put our registered mail number up here. Okay, put it in the header because that makes it appear on all the subsequent pages of the document. That's going to be significant um, in a little while the significance of that. All right, so we got our registered mail number. Okay, it's being mailed by the notary. We have our notice to agent is notice to principal. If you don't know how to put it in this box using Word, all you're going to do is you're going to do to go to insert, okay? And you're going to see a uh, something that says text box. Click on that. Click on the first one. And you put notice. Is it principal or print? Yeah, principal. All right. So stretch that out. Move that around. All right. And now if you don't want the box to show, all right, you simply click right click on the box. Click on format shape. Mm -hmm. Uh oh. Oh, oh, there it is. It's different. Uh, they had options. Damn, I see how to do this. Oh, there's a format shape box over here. I'm using a different version of Word. Uh, let's see, line right here. Uh, is that it? Let me see, see more. Okay, uh, alignment. Dang, this is different. <laughs> this got kind of different, y'all. Let me see, feel, no feel. Line, no line. All right, there we go. All right, so add no line. You can, you can make the line disappear. Okay, so we got notice agent, notice principal, notice principal, notice agent. All right, now you're going to date it, obviously. Always date your correspondence. Mm. 
the seven. All right. And now what is it regarding if we're talking about a complaint? We're dealing with Bank of America. So it's Bank of America loan number. All right. Notice of acceptance. All right. Please be advised that I have accepted your presentment too. And then you're going to have your name for assessed value. Now, why is it assessed? We have acceptance for value. And then you have what's called acceptance for assessed value. You use accept acceptance for value when you don't know the specific amount. When you know the specific amount, you use acceptance for assessed value. All right. So it's been accepted for assessed value. Okay, and we can take that out of out, out of brackets. And I'm returning it to you in exchange for a closure and settlement of account. Okay, and this is of loan number, a loan. We put loan account slash account number, blah, blah, blah. Please send confirmation as account for this obligation. has been adjusted and settled to the address above or send a notice of dishonor from a qualified third party. This is key. Or send a notice of dishonor from a qualified third party. They have to always, because that is a protest. That's how you do it. If there is something wrong with your instrument, okay, that's what notaries do. Notaries issue it. What's a protest? A protest is when you send a negotiable instrument to someone and it is defective in some way, okay, well, they send it back to a notary. You have to because these are instruments. These are money. You just don't send put stuff in the mail. If it gets lost, somebody could be um, liable for that particular instrument. These are negotiable instruments. They can't be floating around and doing things. You have to have a, so you have to take it seriously and have a notary send it back. They don't want to do that because you know it makes them liable. Okay, but it and but for it to be legitimate. They have to send it back to you for, from a qualified third party with it, what's called a certificate of protest. All right. So I am also enclosing an authorization for you to facilitate the use of my credit to discharge all. Uh, uh, this is court. This is a court case, but we're using a, a, a mortgage to discharge. The instruction statement of account are attached for your convenience. So what else are we going to have? We're going to have a statement of account. All right. All right. So let me, let me highlight all this stuff. So we got a statement of account. Let me put it in a different color. So we got a statement of account. Let me underline it too. I want y'all to write all this down. Okay. A statement of account. They 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 need to send it from a qualified third party. All right. They need to do that. We have a statement of account or attached for your convenience. Stephen Mnuchin is also being notified. I'm using my credit. So we got to send a notice to Steve Mnuchin. That's number two. All right. So it's number one, number two. All right. That's going to be a letter of credit that we're going to send to Steve Mnuchin. All right. These are all the things you have to do. All right, so so you're discharging something. You're giving them a statement account showing a zero balance, and you got to inform the uh, fiduciary that is holding it. Like for instance, anytime you use your trust, you're gonna have to tell the trustee, "Hey, trustee, I got a bill over here that needs to be paid." Okay, so you got to inform. You got to keep Steve Mnuchin in the loop. The Secretary of Treasury got to be notified anytime you are utilizing your credit for anything. All right. You got to let Mr. Mnuchin know, like, look, I'm I'm giving authorization for this individual to uh, to uh, access my credit for a, a set off of the obligation. All right. They have to they have to have your authorization. They have to receive an authorization from you. 
Okay, does, does any is anybody confused on this point right now? I'm gonna pause right here because this is an important point. Okay, you know when I pause, okay, this is an important point. All right, so let me open up Ricardo Floramine. Your mic is open. No, I fully understand. Uh, I had a question as far as my uh, my account is concerned. Oh, you're a personal account? You having a problem with it? You know, with uh, the, the, the upgrade. The, oh, I, oh. I, spoke, I spoke to you a couple of times, but I guess you're busy. Uh, yeah, you did. You know, you know what? Let me pause. Uh, right I, I, I didn't want to stop the class by asking this question. No, but. you did. You did. You, you, you ain't wrong because you, you, done, you done been trying to get in touch with me. And, you know, and I was going to do it and I forgot. And, uh, you know, so many people, I, I get a phone call or something, and I'll forget about it. So let me do it right now. You're not out of line. You've been you've been more than patient. So um, Thank you. I, would, I would I would I would probably I'd probably come on cuss me out too at this point. Look, look, mama. I've been patient. I posted, I emailed you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> no, but I know that you have been trying to get this done. So let me uh let me take care of you uh, right Appreciate now. Appreciate it. Thank you, brother. That's no problem, no problem. Cause you have, you definitely, you definitely have. Um, let me see if I, and it is Ricardo. Is that the name that you're under, Ricardo? Yeah, Ricardo Floromon. Yeah, I like my daughter also has a account with you, Charisma Floromon. Okay, yeah. Let me, let me, let me. Anybody, let me pause right now. Matter of fact, let me turn off the recording. And I'll tell you what I'm gonna do right now. Let me take care of everybody who need their account taken care of. Let me take care of that right now. Also. We take care of all y'all stuff. Turn off the recorder. All right, let me see. Hold on, I'm waiting on the web. Okay, there it goes. So Ricardo. Lord, my Ricardo. Okay. And if anybody else needs some help on their account, just let me know. Raise your hand. You're still on or? Hmm? I'm still on. I grab a quick question. Yeah, yeah, you still on? Go ahead. Okay. Now, now the, the copy that you're sending to Steve, uh, Steve Mnuchin will right. basically be the, will be the, will be a copy of what you're sending to the data, right? The well, yeah, you are. You're going. Yeah, uh, it's going to have a cover letter with it, but yes, it will be, essentially it's going to be a copy of everything that you send to them. You're okay. going to send to Mnuchin. So you got to send him. You, okay, he has to be able to locate the account. All right. Okay. What is it that you want me to discharge? What, what, you know, you know, it's basically what you're saying. All right. So you have to be able to, you know, give him, tell them where the account is and everything that you did. So, you know, and also that you're bringing them in as a witness too. you know, that secretary of treasury, he has all this information too. all the appropriate parties that need to be notified, the IRS, the treasury department, everybody needs to be notified what's going on. The IRS very important too because you know they are you know th that's how you uh, assess the account you know, and I've upgraded your membership so you should be good now okay. Thank you again appreciate it. All right, and um, that's about that's about that's about it. Let me get back to let me get back to the letter now. Nobody else raised their hand so I guess everybody's okay. All right. So we got back on the screen. You can see. All right. And was that your only question? 
Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll get, I, I'll get back to you. Okay. Okay. All right. So, all right. Where were we? Okay. Now, right here, we have a statement of account. We need to put a statement of account with it, and we need to have an authorization that is being uh, that's going to go now. The authorization is not going to be in this packet that's going with them, but you're letting them know that you sent an authorization to the Secretary of Treasury. Okay. Now, your refusal to send the confirmation or notice of dishonor will in no way negate this settlement and will be your for your agreement that you and your agency have no capacity to pursue collection. Further collection efforts confirm your agreement that you and your agency or you and your organization collectively and severably owe, and you'll put your name in all caps, five thousand. Now, this can be any amount that you choose to be what you feel. Don't get astronomical with it. Even though I have seen people get astronomical with it, and I'm going to show y'all somebody who has done an attorney who has done this process. An attorney. And that John Doe may take all necessary steps to secure its claim to the debt owed to it and collect. Thank you for your immediate attention to this matter. Sincerely sign it. You're going to sign it. Now, that's it. That's a notice of acceptance. It's not very long, it's to the point. Okay. It's what you're doing. At, you don't have to go into your it's not your job to educate people on the law, okay, or anything like that. You're making conclusions about things when you do all that conclusions of law. That's not for you to do. Okay. You're not supposed to do all that. You sent a one. I've looked at so many different I'm talking about processes and other people who aren't even related to secure party. And all of them I see, they're never longer than a few paragraphs when they send a negotiable instrument. All right, they don't go into some long drawn out explanation of this is what the law says. I have the right to do this according to AGR 192 of June 5th, 1930. You don't do none of that. First of all, when you do that, you're alerting them that, oh, this is one of those sovereign citizen kind of guides or something like that. You don't have to have anything in your correspondence that would even make them think that you make it. You make it seem like, hey, this is just uh, this is everyday business. I do this all the time. All right. That's it. This says everything you need to know in three paragraphs. Okay, Reggie Holmes, you got a you got a question? Yes. Yeah. How you doing, y'all? So thank you, man, for what you're doing. All right. Hey, um, question. Um, at the top you said it's a uh, assessed value. So at the bottom right. where we get the uh, we put the dollar amount. Are we putting the exact dollar amount down there for the claim? Exactly. Well, says, yeah. You know, looking at the when we well, when you get your negotiable instrument, yeah, you, when you set off something, you need the um, you need the exact amount. Okay, so this is why you're going to request a pay. You need the exact amount. That's why you're requesting a payoff. Okay, so you're going to require okay. to do any of this. You're going to be then requested a payoff from the bank. All right, so from that payoff, that's where you're going to get your amount. All right, so now if you want to, mm -hmm. you know, so that assessed value is going to be on here. It's been assessed. All right, for the value of it, okay? Mm -hmm. That it says value is coming from the payoff. This is the payoff, payoff amount. Correct. Correct. Payoff gotcha. amount. Okay, All so right. down where it says um, the collectively and severe, severely owed um, John A. Joe, that dollar amount, is that the same dollar amount or, or you just no, put this is, the number this that you want to put there? Amount. This is any dollar amount you okay. want because, okay, here it is. Let me explain the principle behind this. And this is how you have to think as a businessman and a creditor. Because I know I think like this. This banker taught this banker taught me this very well. Your time is money. Gotcha. Okay. You making me sit here and write all these damn letters and do all this. I'm charging you for this. It might my, my yeah. Hey, this costs three hundred dollars an hour. If I if I gotta sit down and write you another letter. After all this, this is how much it's gonna is gonna cost you for wasting my time. My time is money. So whatever you think your time is worth on here, right here, that's what's gonna go right there. Okay. Because that's what they do to you. When you go to court, they talk about court cost, attorney fees, and all that. Don't they charge you for all of that? They do. All right. So you're doing right, the same. Right. You're doing the same thing. 
This is my this is my okay. time is money. All right. So if you're gonna waste my gotcha. time, this is how much it's gonna cost you. Okay, I got you. I got you. Um quick question on the notary part. Can a notary be out of the state that you're living in? Yeah, yeah. Yes, it can. Okay. A notary can. A notary can a notary notaries are good are good in all jurisdictions. So yes, they can. It'd probably be preferable, to tell you the truth. Just as long as you if you have a court case, can she make it to court? You're gonna probably pay for her expenses to come and she needs to keep a notarial record book of everything. She's in another state, you know, you need to come in and she has to fingerprint you and do all that kind of stuff to show because they got a little part in their little notary book for a fingerprint to show that when you came in there that you were in a presence, uh, you know, and things like that, that they actually did, you know, meet you and talk to you. That notarial right, record right. book is very is very important, you know, is very important piece of evidence as well. So, so right now what we're doing is we're establishing, we have a witness and we are getting our proof together. Okay. This is proof. All right. So we send in a registered mail. This is one witness and the notary is our second witness. Okay. Now what's going to go with this is what is called a certificate of service. All right. You put your certificate of service with this. All right. On, you're going to date mail. This is for the notary to do. She's going to notarize all of this on such and such date. I mailed to. She's going to put the name of the respondent, which whoever it is, in this case is Bank of America. The papers identified as notice of acceptance and the accepted presentment. And one thing you want to put in there too is your international bill of exchange. <laughs> by mailing them in a prepaid envelope addressed to the recipient named above burn and we have a registered mail number hold on y'all i apologize for that i apologize for that so i had something i had to take care of real quick but anyway it's uh right here all right so we have our certified mail, our certificate of service. Some people prefer to use an affidavit of mailing. I think a certificate of service uh, is more uh, congenial to uh, the notaries and so forth. I've had some notaries, they don't like signing an affidavit of mailing and so forth. Certificate of service will work just as well. Uh, you need to have the papers identified. She is notarizing this and this is what she mailed and she's going to notarize it. That's it. Now, there, there's there's nothing else with this other than the uh, instrument that's going to go. You're going to put this together. The date of this also is going to be the date uh, the date that is going to be mailed out. Okay, it's going to match up. This date right here is going to match up with this date on your certificate of non-response right here. So the date right here goes on. The date here. All right. Now, remember, you're putting all these documents together at the same time. You're going to give your notary all three documents at the same time. You're going to give her your certificate of non response. You're going to give her your first mailing package that goes out. And you're going to give her your second mailing package that goes out. She's going to have the entire process in her hand. The next time that you talk to your notary, she should just be handing you your certificate of non-response. That's it. Once you hand all this off to her, you don't talk to her no more. Does everybody understand that? All right. We got somebody got the hand up. What's this? Uh, kitchen. Well, somebody Kitch Lark got his hand up, but you ain't got your, you ain't got your phone. You on your you on the telephone, man. You ain't put in a code to get in on it on it. You got your hand up. Does anybody have any questions right now on what? I'm sorry, Lee Green. Let me see it. The mic won't open up, Lee Green. Oh, there you go. Hold on. 
it open and then close. Wait a minute, let's just... Okay, Lee Green. Lee Green. Sorry about that, y'all. People keep coming in. All right, let me see. Lee Green, you, you ain't coming through. So I'm going to catch Lark. You got a question? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now loud and clear. Oh, fantastic. Hey, Yusuf. Uh, thank you for all you're doing. Peace to you, man. All right. Hey, um, well, I got a, a couple short uh, follow-up questions um, based on the questions just asked to you, and then I've got my main question, if I can. Um, regarding a notary, is it acceptable for a wife to be a, a notary for a husband? Or yes, vice it person? is. As a matter of fact, I got case law on that. I got case law on that. I had to dig it out. I went to law library. I did a whole treatise on notaries based off of, uh, if you want to study notaries, the book that you study in the law library is Corpus Juris Secundae. Um, American jurisprudence is not as good, but Corpus Juris Secundae has a very good section on notary publics. And I also studied here in Georgia, the case law. And that case, basically, I posted it on my Facebook page, as a matter of fact, that a husband can't, a, a wife can't notarize documents for a husband. And likewise, yes, they can. Okay. And I just had a Fantastic. question. Somebody just, I did a consultation day. Somebody asked me that. They said they called down there in D.C. and they told them that they could. So I just had that question today. But I already knew it based on the case law. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you. Um, the other, the gentleman just asked uh, about a notary that's out of state and you said, yeah, that's acceptable. Um, but you probably still need to, to appear before that notary. Do you for yeah, uh, the I, signature? I mean, you know, and they, stuff. Stuff. they got like electronic notaries now that are doing things through the internet. Uh, right now, the technology is allowing them. Um, there is a lady. If you just really want to know the expert on notaries is, uh, uh, Lizia, she's on my Facebook page. Her name is, let me, let me show you this, this chick is, you need to contact her. She's, uh, she got notaries all over the country and, uh, let me pull her up real quick. Let me see notaries to go. Where is, where is she at? I don't see a notary. No, no, I'm trying to find her real quick. Uh, oh, here she is, Alicia Grisby. Yeah, this this lady right here. She need a notary now. Order one. You know, on Facebook. Her name is Alicia Grisby. You know, y'all should contact her. She's she's like. She's like one of those anal notaries that make sure that everything is done by the book. So, uh, but she's very good and very knowledgeable at what she does. And uh, you can ask her these questions. She has notaries everywhere. And if you need a notary in your area, most likely she can get you a notary in your area. And she can also tell you about how uh, the uh, electronic stuff that they're doing. They got notaries. They got this thing. Um, I ain't looked at it in a while, but let me see. It's a notary. Like electronic notary or something like that. I think. Let me see if I got it over here. Uh, yeah, electronic notary and e-notarization software. So they're doing stuff like this now. You know, mm -hmm. and uh, so, yeah, I mean, you know, the banks do it. Banks do it all the time. If you ever get a mortgage, look who, who notarized it. It's notarized in another state. It's not even notarized in the state you're in a lot of times. So grow your notary. Okay. You know, when you register with free doc, very kind, you are a commissioned notary. You can also add yourself as a notary business. Customers looking for a notary in your area can easily find you, blah, blah, blah. 
come an electronic notary or remote notary boom 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 but she can she can tell you you know about it better than i can but uh you know it, it i've used notaries all over the country it's about a witness i a notary anywhere a notary document is notarized is good in any jurisdiction it's good in any jurisdiction okay Fantastic. Hey, my other question I had to do with that um, John Doe, you know, straw, um, caps, all caps, um, <clears throat> straw man, five grand in the, in the document there. Does that actually show up somewhere? Where would we expect to see that? Well, you, you're up? telling now what you're going to do is you're going to you're going to bill them for it. There is a process that you have to go through um, to collect something. And I'm going to show it to you right now using an attorney as an example y'all want i want y'all to pay attention what i'm about to show you because it's it's real big um i was up all night doing research somebody asked me a question do you have to be a secure part to discharge debt so i was in the middle of uh putting together a uh putting together a uh uh a video basically explaining the difference of discharging debt without without being a secure party and being one and i came across this right here and it was uh let me see real quick let me see if i got it Ooh, hold on this guy right here his name is stephen l wisney all right I have been searching this guy and um, it is, uh, man, I found so, so much stuff going on in the world from just researching this stuff right here. And uh, let's see if I can, can I get back to his, uh, he locked me out of it, hold on. And he's tied to this guy right here, this guy right here, Artemis Soros. Who, who has heard of this guy right here? This is somebody you need to really start studying. His name is Artemis Soros. I'm going to show y'all some stuff that's going to blow y'all mind. Um, I've been doing research everywhere. I mean, this thing led me all over the place. Uh, let's see. Is this it right here? This is his bill. of. This is the bill of exchange that he used right here. Okay. This guy right here, he used the bill. And see, you can see it looks just like the one original one I got. He had it before I did. This guy right here, and this is an attorney. All right, this guy is an attorney. This guy right here, his name is Stephen uh, Wozni. I've been researching him. Okay, now in the commercial chamber, see, this is it right here. This is what he used. This is the exact one that the uh, that the banker gave me. All right, now. Uh, let me see. Does he have his uh, right there? 2004. There is his UCC filing numbers. 226-4306. 226 4306. Let me see. Okay, that's him right there. All right. Continue. Uh, let's see. Probably don't need that. All right, here it is. All right. <laughs> you can see right here, this guy, he filed, he got initial, he did an amendment right here. You can look at it. Let me see what his amendment looks like. This is a partial assignment of collateral. Okay, let me, let me give you some background on this guy first. This guy right here is an attorney. Okay. I was I had to go and start researching him. He filed a lien against the Bar Association in Washington, D.C. for like a trillion dollars. All right. He did an assignment to this guy in uh this guy right here, Artemis Soros. This guy has tried to pay off the national debt of Greece with it. Now, it is going big over there. He got arrested. They took it to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court shot it down, said, because they tried to say that, you know, they, of course, they're saying it's bogus, it's fake. Where has he got the money? 
And this dude is going against the Federal Reserve and all this kind of stuff. It's real big. I mean, he's almost like a national hero over there in Greece right now. And it all traced back. I did the research to this guy, Stephen Wozni in Washington, D.C. He took this uh, lien that he filed against the Bar Association in, 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 in the state of Washington. And he monetized it internationally. Been getting money off of it for like the last 10 or 15 years. It happened like in 2002. He did it in 2002. He used the process in cracking the code. Now, this is a very intelligent guy. Now, let me show you something else about this guy. All right, before we continue. All right, here he is right here. Here's how it all jumped off. This him right here. He was representing these people in court. All right, you need to read all of this right here because it explains the whole story of how he was going against the judge. Judge, um, same stuff that we talk about. He had a default judgment uh, against another judge. They wouldn't uh, honor it. Uh, he took it all the way to the Supreme Court, and they disbarred him. Now, all over the country, all over the world, and they saying, oh, well, this guy, he was no, uh, no good. He was some type of fraudster. No, 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 no. This guy, Stephen L. Wisney, is a good, good man. He's an honorable man. I read this whole thing. I was reading all this. This is a letter to the Supreme Court where he's talking about, you know, he's he, he, he giving it to him. He's giving him the business. I was going to make a video on this. I was going to make a video on this, this whole entire thing. And he ended up, I guess he came across cracking the code or something. He ended up putting a lien against him. This is him right here. You see right here, he's an attorney. You see right here. Uh, that, uh, where is it at? And this is the letter that he sent into the, uh, to the, cause when they was trying to disbar him, he got the transcripts and everything in here and you can see it. See right here. Respectfully, Stephen L. Wisney, plaintiff co-counsel attorney for plaintiff Christine M. Birdwell and her, her husband has died since. Okay. I haven't finished researching everything. I was up till five o'clock in the morning researching all of this but anyway this guy he put a lien and right here this is a partial assignment right here that he did all right this is a partial assignment of collateral in the ucc financing statement number and this is the original financing statement employer identification number you got that federal reserve bank of richmond personal exemption account bond okay that's the number on the back of his uh social security number personal UCC uh, trust account pending in the amount of unlimited. Now, this is an attorney doing this. Highly intelligent attorney. Put a link. Now, let me show you the link. Let me show you the link. Let me, let me show you the link. I think these are all right here when he did his, uh, he did his assignments. These are members. You see it was back in 2003. And he started doing amendments. Because this is not the original. Let me go back. Let me go back and uh, let me go back over here again. Search by file number. Okay, there's his initial filing. That's a paper record. He did an amendment right here. This is in 2006. He did another amendment, which is probably another assignment. But when you go through his UCC filings, this right here is what you need to study because this is how you do this is how you do amendments. You do one initial financing statement. The rest of them are going to be amendments. You're going to see amendments. This is initial filing financing statement. That's his UCC one, and the rest of these are all UCC threes. Every time he discharge a debt or uh, transfer some interest in it, it goes over here. So right here. You see, you see, he got a bill of exchange in the amount of 80, 800. He did one for $855, but let me see if I can find the other one. All right, this right here. And these are all the original ones. I'm looking for his original ones that he had. He's been doing a lot of other stuff. Let me see if I can find his. It's a 2002. Let me go back. Let me go back and do another search on him. Because he got 
because this ain't the case right here. I, I want to I want to see if I can find. Uh, secure party as an individual. Let me try. Okay, let's see if that comes up. That's him right there. Let me see a report. They gave me on the report. That's the search number. That's that finance. That's his initial financing statement, 2004. See Washington State Bar Association. That's it right there. So there's a file number right there. All right. Let me see if I can uh, find it right here. He filed a lien against the par. I mean, this thing has been. This is. I didn't even know all this was going on. And you can go right now and look on YouTube and see that. And you do to do Artemis. You can see he's been fighting for greed. Yeah, here's all of it right here. Now, you can see right here, there was his initial financing statement. He filed against the Bar Association. So let's take a look at it and see what it is, what he said. All right. Okay, right here. So you can see right here that he filed it. The debtor is the... Uh, you see right here is the Washington Bar Association. 2000 got all the address and everything. USA Post Code got all that. Here he is, Wozni, Stephen Lewis. There's his address. Entry of a commercial lien related to a private contract for unauthorized use of a copyright trademark. For the terms of said contract, interested parties may contact secure party for full details. All of debtor's assets, land, and personal property and all of debtors' interest in said assets, land, and personal property, now owed and hereafter acquired, now existing and hereafter acquired, now existing and hereafter arising, and wherever located, until the debt now owed, in other words, two trillion eight hundred and seventy-six billion five hundred twenty-six million five hundred thousand United States dollars. Now they talk about how crazy we are. All right, look at that. He got a certificate of what? Dishonor protest. Has been given by Michael A. Stoddard, notary public, adjudicating this debt pursuant to the revised code of Washington, section 62A.3-505B. That's UCC 3-505. Ain't that right here in our UCC 3-505 on our certificate of non-response? All right. On the 13th day of August 2004 against Deptor, which is available from uh, uh, from secure party. And this is why I keep telling people, you don't file your paperwork with your UCC1. If you want any additional information, you get it. He said you can contact. He said right here for full details, interested parties may contact the secure party. That's why you have your contact information up here. All right. You don't start filing copies of your security agreement, copies of damn silver and all that BS with your, your UCC1. All right, so right here, you can see what he says on the 13th of August, 2004 against Deptor, which is available from Secure Party. Secure Party reserves the right to execute judgment by confession for Deptor. This is judgment by confession. That means they ain't got to go to court. Confess judgment. That's what you got in all your, car, uh, your car contracts. It's a confess. That's why they come and take your car and not take you to court. It's called a confess judgment. So. He says, I reserve the right to execute confessed judgment uh, for debtor pursuant to RCW 4.60 on the debt owing or to begin involuntary bankruptcy proceedings against the debtor at any time that secure party believes that it is in the secure party's best interest. Secure party has the right to assign or sell any and all of this debt at any time to any party the secure party chooses without permission or discussion with the debtor. For full details, interested parties may contact secure party. He went into this knowing who he's going to do. That's the attorney doing this. This is an intelligent guy. If you want to see how intelligent he is, read this letter he wrote to the Supreme Court and see what if you got it's so many. This thing is chock full 
of information right here. I could teach a class off this letter that he wrote to the Supreme Court right here. Letter to the Supreme Court, Chief Judge Jerry Alexander. Y'all even, this is back in 2002. I ain't never heard of it. Probably none of y'all even heard of this. And now in 2018, based off of what this man did in 2002, there is a case going on in Greece about with this man right here because he's trying to get rid of the national debt because he understand about the bankers and all of this kind of stuff. It didn't, it didn't blew up. This dude, Bob Birdwell, he's the wife, he's the husband of uh, this lady right here, Christina Birdwell. He died since. Um, man, let me tell you, this, this whole case is like, <laughs> this whole case is off the chain. That's all I can say. I, I, I just didn't even know all this was going on. Where is it at? Let me see. This guy right here, Artis, so, Artemis Soros. And you can go to YouTube. Y'all seeing I do research. I'll be researching some stuff. I ain't lying. I, I go and I've been researching. I've read see, I because I like to get the background story because you know when I was reading everything, they were saying Steve Wozni is a uh is a he's a crook. He's uh see all this stuff, Artemisaurus. This dude got all the all these people over in that country, they looking at him like this lady right here, you know, on Artemisaurus. Now, all this goes back to this UCC-1. Remember, all this go back to this right here, this initial financing statement that was filed in 2004. He did a lien against the uh, against them. You got all these world, you, now, I want to pause it. You got all these world events going on. And, and uh, man, let me tell you, they took it serious. It's serious. And then, so they're trying to say they couldn't get them for this lien. So they try to get him on embezzlement or something like that because they took it to the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court reversed the ruling. Let me show you the Supreme Court ruling on it. Hold on. I mean, it, this is like some really, really, really powerful information I'm showing y'all right now. Uh, hold on for a second. Let me pull out this Supreme Court ruling real quick. because I, I, I like copied all these documents. Cause I may, I was gonna make, I'm making a YouTube video off of it, but I got to get all my research done. You can see, uh, you can see right here. This is all my research, and I'm putting together for this, um, on this. Everybody who Michael E. Tardif is, this dude right here, he's one of the uh, judges. This dude, he don't do nothing but uh, liability against the state. He's one of the judges that came in. Um, he's tied in with what happened to Kwame Kilpatrick down in uh. Detroit in some kind of way. I ain't figured it out. Right here, you can see this guy right here, Artemis, right here. He said, Greece's Supreme Court has overturned a decision by the Misdemeanor Court of Athens in 2013 to acquit Artemis Sor Soros on charges of disseminating false information. Artemis Soros is a self-proclaimed trillionaire and founder and leader of the political group Assembly of Greeks. And 2013, Soros appeared claiming to have access to his own personal fortune of 600 billion of euros and offered to repay Greece's sovereign debt, gripping the country for several years. At the time, the misdemeanor court's decision said that there is nothing that proves that the money does not exist or the falseness of the titles incorporated. All right, so they looked at everything and they didn't see anything. Because this attorney, I'm trying to tell y'all, he... He is look at look how long he's been doing this. 2008. Look at all these assignments he's been doing. 2008. He got three pages of this stuff all the way up till his last assignment. And all the people that are involved in this different countries was in 2014. I think he did an assignment. You can just follow. Now, this is what's called the commercial record. This is how you file form claims on your instruments. See how all these are amendments? These are all UCC threes. You only do a UCC one one time. Every time you do anything after that, it's a UCC three. So this, uh, oh, this is his continuation. So he made sure he continued it. He got his continuation statement. So he's probably gonna do some more stuff with it. But right here, all this stuff has been going on since they're full deleted for attempted fraud. I mean, every time, like he deleted some of that collateral change. Uh, enter commercial. You can follow the whole story of what's going on, who all these individuals are, like this for Mari Mag Bognow, 
Um, he making assignments to all these guys. He didn't monetize this thing and sold it. And they've been traded all over the world. And uh, so right here, you see, you see all his different assignments right here. He did an amendment in 2004. This is in 2009. Okay, he did. Yeah, the Red Panther Limited, uh, right here. And some of it was looking kind of suspect to me. I think he was uh, what he was doing. I, but I know what was going on. He was looking for people to uh, monetize it with, and uh, you know that's a very very fraudulent thing to get into monetization of instruments. But you see the registered mail right here. He's doing all the same stuff we do. And right here, you see he did an assignment. This, this is why he checked assignment right here. All right, which is what you're going to do when you when you discharge a debt, you're going to fill out a document that looks exactly like this and it's going to be attached to your bill of exchange. All right, you're going to file this. You're going to put your bill of exchange. See how you got his bill of IBO number right here. You have his registered mail number, all that for value of how much it was, 500 million and IBOE registered mail number for base value, 500 million to his subsidiary company, Red Partner Limited. He, made, he did an assignment over to this company. So you're going to see this, and but this guy Artemis, he did an assignment to this guy right here, Artemis Soros, right? and he's a businessman. These are reputable people. These are not like, these are not people that um, just some fly-by-night individuals. This guy right here got a whole bunch of uh, reputation in business and so forth. He's on news channels doing debates and all kinds of things like that. And the person that jumped everything off was an attorney. This is an attorney who was going against the system. That's why when you read this right here, you're going to see it. He's talking about the whole thing. This right here talks about the whole thing. He's giving a whole story, affidavit, and everything about what these people did. He said, okay, he said, the time has come to put the singularly American maximum, we are a nation of laws, not men, to the test. The result will be so profound that the premise of our existence and the very survival as a free and honorable people may have, be, uh, may have to be reexamined. Let not one who is unwise and unlearned ascend the judgment seat, which is the throne of God, lest he change light into darkness and least like a madman with a sword in his untutored hand, he slay the innocent and set free the guilty. And it's Henricus uh, Bratona, whatever, you're giving a quote. Our experience thus far indicates that those words make up an empty phrase to which no one should attach their moorings. I have said in the courtroom where presiding Coates County Superior Court Judge James Warm holds for and have watched as he signs default orders and judgments every 30 to 40 seconds in an unending stream. The defaulting party didn't answer, didn't file a valid notice of appearance. The defaulting party didn't perform. The defaulting party defaulted. The defaulting parties were just nameless, faceless, ordinary people. Judge Warm may or may not have even heard their name. The singular issue was that a lawyer was before him who had to file some papers and would say, yes, your honor, I have an order of default and judgment for you to sign. Judge Warm would be handed the document, maybe ask a question, maybe not, look at the papers and sign the order and judgment, and that's the end of the matter. Party A and Party B didn't matter. A default is a default. Next case. Where that whole system fell apart, is when party A and party B has the name Bridgewater. Bridgewater defaulted. Bridgewater did not answer the complaint. Bridgewater is an, as another judge or something. Bridgewater did not file a notice of appearance. As a matter of law, we are entitled to have the lawful order and judgment signed. Plaintiffs in Cowitz County cause number blah, 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 named Carol C. Bridgewater, private party, natural person as the defendant. Since the court does not have the power to rewrite contracts, or use interpretations as a guise to rewrite a contract, and he's given case law on that, and also citing American jurisprudence, nor does an individual have the lawful power to take it upon themselves to rewrite another's pleadings. Why then would Michael Tardiff, okay, that was a guy I just showed you, of the state attorney general's office representing the state joined as an involuntary plaintiff, the Washington Bar Association et al. Commit, commit such obvious fraud by insisting that the defendant named in Cowitz County cause number is Judge Bridgewater and the state is defender. The pleadings are very specific and the plaintiff herein knew precisely whom we, whom we were suing and clearly stated the factual reason. Now, this is when he was still a, an attorney. I researched this guy. He's not crazy. He doesn't need a psychological examination or anything like that. He was a guy that was fed up 
uh, with what these people are doing. And as a matter of fact, I got some more stuff right here. This is all the information on it, too. The criminals are no different, simply better dressed and smartly disguised in black robes. Okay, this is Judge Pomeroy caught red handed and all this. This is Stephen Wanowski. These people, I found all, the, I'm still researching it. I'm still researching. Here's an affidavit from the guy from uh, of Robert Birdwell and his wife, the guy who died, is talking about what happened and so forth. And this this attorney, I don't know if he lost it or whatever, but for some reason, when they took his when they when they disbarred him, he put a damn lien on the bar association. And you can see for years he's been at their ass selling it. Okay, the bar association even filed a document in the commercial chamber saying we don't owe you no money, but that don't mean anything because he has all the documents to show that he defaulted them out. Okay, to using an administrative process. Now. This is an attorney that did this. And he used the process out of cracking the code third edition. I can tell what he did. But I can tell he used also his lawyering skills to improve whatever it was he was doing and to ensure that what he was doing was 100% perfectly legal. He ain't got put in jail. Ain't nothing happened. Ain't nobody did nothing to him or nothing like that. He put a lien on ass for $2 trillion and have been selling it. Does anybody have a question on what I just said? William Moore, your mic is open. Hey, yes. Uh, I had a question a while ago. Um, I'll go ahead and ask it now. Since I'm a newbie to this, this is like my second webinar. There's a lot of stuff that I need to do before this, right? Yes. Uh, if you are a member of the SPC, university i would strongly suggest that you watch the training videos for the secure party process because what this is right here this is a secure party process he is a secure party he put a lien somebody because th this is the thing when you're a secure party okay you are somebody nobody's supposed to mess with and this attorney let them know you don't mess with me he put I, now I, I haven't finished researching this but he put a two trillion dollar lien. He sold it too. It's a valid lien because it's a valid lien, and the Supreme Court in Greece has to confirm that. But you wouldn't know it in the United States because he took it international, like many of them do. I'm just saying, and he tried to pay off the national debt of Greece. Y'all need to go and research this guy, but I would follow the secure party training thing. And these Jews, because this is what's happening. It's the Jews because all the world is indebted to these Jews. All right. He's trying. Greece got one of the worst economies on planet Earth. One of the worst economies on planet Earth. He's trying to clear the debt. Because you can see right here. Let these guys tell you. It's very good to be with you. My pleasure. Good evening. I understand you're an economist. I am an economist, yes, indeed. Right. Do you understand the euro? No, I'm an economist. No, you want religious questions, Brian. You've got to go and get somebody appropriately qualified. I'm an economist. Can you, can you explain to us then the Greek economy? Oh, look, Brian, I, you know, better value elsewhere, I think. I mean, I wouldn't... Better be putting... value elsewhere, what do you mean? No, I wouldn't touch it with the pole, Brian. Don't put your money in there. No, 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 I don't want to invest in it. I'm just oh. asking you to describe Oh, you're seeking it. information yeah, about information the nature about it. Oh, yeah. I see. Because there's a great amount of... Nerves. And these guys right here, they... they, they 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 comedians, but they give you the facts on it. Greece got a messed up economy. I've been doing the research on it, and Greece's economy, they're going through so much turmoil over there, and this guy, these people are looking at this guy like he's a national hero. And they got his support and everything, and they trying to put him in jail. They saying he's a fraud. He told people to stop paying taxes. Uh, that uh, He shouldn't have did that, but he's trying to shut down what they're doing. He's trying to free his country. From this servitude, I'm watching all type of videos. You need to go and start researching this. But see, if you didn't know what I just showed you, you wouldn't know where this guy got this money from. Or he got it from is this attorney in right here. It all started right here. It started with this initial financing statement right here where he filed a lien against the Bar Association for $2 trillion. And he has sold it. He has sold it right here. It started right here. It started right. Everything that's happening over there in Greece started right here with this piece of paper right here. Right here. 
two trillion dollars. Now, a lot of people don't know that. But I did the research on it and tracked it down. I'm like, well, look at this right here. Now, if you want to see how to properly do amendments, you should look at everything in his commercial registry because he's an attorney. I'm going to be copying a lot of the verbiage he's using. I'll tell you that. I'm going to look at all his paperwork. But he started out, he filed a lien against him. Okay. What I don't have is the lien process he used, the administrative process that, that process that he used. Well, you can see the verbiage he used is our, all our verbiage, EIN numbers, uh, prepaid accounts. He put a commercial lien against them and he sold it internationally because he had the connections. He knew how to do it. He's an attorney. Now, if anybody else wants to talk about whether this process is real or not, I think this kills it right there. I've said in the past that if you search the commercial registry, you will find the people around the country who know this at a very high level because everybody has to file paperwork in the commercial registry. It's a lot of uh, accounts to dig through, but you will find some other ones like this. This is the kind of research I do. Did you have another question, sir? I'm sorry. I start, you know, I'd run off at the mouth. Where'd he go? Did he close his mic up? I'm sorry. Yeah, I have an open mic, so okay. I, I didn't want to. Uh, yeah, that was my question. You, you covered it. I just needed to, right. My real question was just where should I start? You, you start with, uh, if you're a SPC member, uh, at least a gold member, start with the secured party training videos. Start right there. I did the platinum. Well, well, if you are if you're a platinum member, yeah, start with the training video. Well, you have to be at least a go, but you're a platinum member, yeah, start with those. Okay. Start with those, those, those training videos start right there. Okay. Right. Thank you. All right. Matter of fact, I think you just gave me an idea. I think I'm gonna put a starting, I'm gonna put some on the website that says start right here. <laughs> I think I'm gonna put a tab that says start here. <laughs> Everybody start here. I think that'd be a good idea. Let me go, Reggie Holmes. Reggie Holmes, you had a question. Yeah, um, kind of answered it already. Uh, on the guy back in, um, I was looking at deciding how to do an amendment because back in 2011, I did this whole process, became a secure party creditor. I'm on a, the website that you own. I know I can look my name up and everything. And um, so I guess from what you're saying that we just need to do amendments. We don't need to file another UCC 11 because I was oh. going to your videos. Yeah, I you mean, only uh, do a three. I got to do a video on the three. three. Okay, I got to show you how to okay. do it. When, and that's when we be in my dish. That's why we're doing this video now because I am. This this class is going to show you how to do a three. I'm just taking y'all one okay. day at a time. Like like right. next class, we go, we're going to do a uh, non-response. And I'm just taking y'all one class at a time, video at a time. I ain't rushing through it. But today, gotcha. I want to spend some time verifying what we're doing because other people, high level people are doing this. And I found this out a long time ago. I was a lot of stuff I learned from um, like guys who monetize instruments don't have anything to do with what we're doing. And that's how we came together. Cause I was like, man, and you're going to find other people. Cause what I found, I felt like, wow, it's people uh, monetizing a birth certificate, doing all kinds of stuff. But it's just like, you got to have the inside knowledge to know how to do all of this stuff. It's not that it's not a valid process. A lot of this stuff in America, they don't it don't never make it to the Supreme Court. OK, they don't want no case law on the records with the Supreme Court about a lot of this stuff that we're doing and everything. So they'll come around, and say it's frivolous and all this. They tried to say that over there in Greece, too. That was frivolous. He's like, no, it's not. There's no evidence of anything. All right. All it ain't no. Money. OK, because the thing about it is, OK, well, where y'all getting y'all money at? Where the Federal Reserve getting their money at? That's, exactly. It's called fiat exactly. currency. It's called fiat currency. They have the audacity, the un the unmitigated gall to come in our face and say that this is a worthless piece of paper when they have right there in Modern Money Mechanics, they tell us that they paper is a worthless piece of paper. Yeah. I don't and, and, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was, uh, you know, just because 
in 2011, we went through this whole process, and we, um, uh, the people that was doing it with us that helped mentor get us through this process disappeared on us, and it kind of like scared us, man. Like, what, what just happened? They so ain't know what we, else we, to do. They ain't know what else okay. to do. That's all it is. I got you. But what, I got when you, you file that UCC one, the only thing you filing after that one are threes. That's all you three. file. Every time, okay. every time that you write an instrument, every time what you do, what's called an assignment. Okay, you're doing an assignment. <laughs> so right here, you can look right here. He filed his one. This is his one right mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. Everything after that is when he did some sort of like a discharge of debt. All right. It's like okay. a discharge of debt. Okay, these are all the UCC. You see these amendments? These are all threes. These are all threes. Mm -hmm. These are all the UCC gotcha. threes. All, every one of them. When I click on one, that's what you're going to see. It's going to say a UCC three. Let me see what this one is. You see right here? See right here? He did an assignment. You're going to check that box. Mm -hmm. Right here is going to be this number right here is your original filing number. So when you look up here, every time you do an amendment, it's going to have up here, it's going to have a new filing number. This is what the number that you're going to put on your like your bill of exchange. You want to say, okay, here's my bill of exchange. Okay, this is the claim number that's going to go on your bill of exchange. That's the file number that's going to go on there because that's going to let everybody subsequent holder of that instrument know that you have a claim on it. This is how they know you got a claim on it. See right here, you got an international bill of exchange. 2000, you got the mm -hmm. number of it right here. You got the, all right, all that formally assigned. This is the person who he assigned it to on the 10th day of May 2009 for a total amount. And he only doing big numbers, too. Look at that. 500 million, 500 billion. He doing big numbers. So he did a partial. This is a partial assignment. He got a two trillion dollar uh, lien. He gave them 500 billion of it. He assigned it to these people right here. And don't think he did it for free. He getting money. He getting money off of that. Trust me on that. I don't know how much he, ma he making money off of it. All right. And. He's been doing it for years. So, you know, so I don't know. I'm not sure what 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 uh, his uh, exactly what his process was. They use the link because they don't have that obviously in here. But you can see right now and this don't lapse until what? 2019. So, so right here, here's an assignment. Here's the, uh, here it was. Individual. Oh, this is. Oh, I think he assigned something to this guy. And then this guy made an assignment to this guy. All right. Yeah, he, he assigned some, but you are, right here you see, yes, Stephen Wosky, the person who did the assignment is right here. Well, it's a change, new, oh, that's a change, a new added, in, oh, they added some information. Individual's name and so forth. But you can see right here, this was a collateral. You always do a collateral, an assignment right here. You can see where he's assigning this right here. And you go go to all of them. You can see like let's look at another one real quick. Let's look at let's look at just pick one. And they all look the same. You see right here, he did an assignment. Here's the initial financing statement number, right here. Okay, that's that that's your UCC. You're always gonna put the fine the filing number of your UCC one right here in one A. That's what connects your UCC three to the UCC one. Okay, and right here you can see in the sum of certain amount, two trillion dollars, blah blah blah, is assigned to Jonathan Ty Clinard International Bill of Exchange to inclusively block each instrument valued at 100 billion each. And Society Libero Rignegro Battleground. I mean, this thing got assigned all over the place, man. It started going right. everywhere, and uh, it had been through so many different hands, so, so many assignments. You have to go, th I haven't went through all of them. But I, what I wanted to do is document what I was doing is documenting everybody it got assigned to. And I'm researching everybody. That's what I'm this right here is the education right here. I ain't gonna lie. It's uh, looking at this because here's a partial assignment. Um, it is from there's Jonathan Todd. He got it at some point again. So let's go back up somewhere along the line. He, he, he assigned it to Jonathan Todd. Find out who that individual is. And there is that's Stephen Wowski again. You can see right here, he did an assignment. There's initial financing statement. In accordance with notice contains certain private consensual contract. Protest, UC1 financing, wherein the Washington State Bar Association has been commercially adjudicated debtor liable to secure party in the principal amount of U.S. of and got the amount. And he put an interest on it, too. That bank, you've always put interest on it. 
one percent per month. So he gave him one, he charged him one percent per month every month. Wow, that's nice. I ain't never seen that. That was nice. He put an interest rate on him right there. He put interest on it. <laughs> wow. Look at that. I ain't got up to like a big amount. That's like what? That's uh that's 958 billion right here. And you will see it. It's I mean, it, this, this is wild. And I don't have copies. You got to order these paper records and everything. These right here, we can't get copies of. It's a whole bunch of documents in here. I just can't pull up on a PDF, which are these documents right here, which I'm sure got a lot of information in those too. Uh, let me pull up another one. Look at it real quick. And look at all these people. Hands is involved in this. Look at this. Wayne, Doran, Boy. I know it's all of them use semicolons on their name too. Uh, let's see. Two trillion dollars. I mean, they've been doing it for years. And you, you know, let me tell y'all something. If this was started in 2004. And you see, they went been activity on this thing. You know, there's some money jumping around in hands. Ain't nobody just playing with something just for no reason. There had to be something about this thing that was powerful because it ended up in this man's hands right here, Artemis Soros, and it didn't created a national firestorm. And y'all ain't heard a peep about it. And this lady right here, she's doing a video. They supporting him because he's trying to clear the national debt over here. You Google this guy. Everything's in Greek. I don't know Greek, but this is him right here. He's on all type of TV shows. And the money that he's talking about clearing the national debt, it came from this lean. All this stuff. This all this guy right here. All of them are talking about him. All of them are talking about this guy. All right. And what, what he's fighting, he's fighting the Jew, you know, basically the, the central banks is what he's fighting against. Same thing that all everybody's dealing with in every country. And you can see they talking about the same thing. These people are finding out. I, I was doing over the research in Greece. They do going through the same thing in Greece. We're going through over here. They don't, they, only, they don't, it's not called the federal reserve over here, but they finding out they getting, they getting raped and everything. And they arrested this man. He got arrested finally. All right, but they didn't arrest him for that. They tried to get him on that, but they couldn't. So they got him on embezzlement and some other stuff, all right, which was probably all fake and made up. I'm sure it is. But this is him right here, Artemis Soros. Y'all should, should research this and see because there's a lot of stuff going on behind this, but it all traces back to that bond. It all traces back to that. Let me, uh, let me you got another question, brother? No, I'm good. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Marcus Bay, you got a question. Marcus Bay, your mic is open. William Moore. I'm going to get William Moore's mic open. William Moore. William Moore. I, I don't have I don't have a question. Okay, all right, your hand was up. All right. Uh Reggie Holmes. Did I already get Reggie Holmes? Did I already get you Reggie Holmes. I think I already got you, didn't I? Yeah, that's, that's, we, yeah we were just home. Okay, and Ricardo Fairmore, did you have another question? Yeah. Um uh, maybe I'm jump jumping ahead ahead, but now if you're choosing to do this for a friend or family member. Obviously, you're going to use a UCC-3. Well, no. The UCC-3, do you know what a UCC-3 is for? No. Okay. I'm, I'm, go ahead. You talk, it's a collateral ad. Yes, if you wanted to add your family members to your UCC-1, you could do that. It's, a, it's for any collateral. And your family, your children are your property. So if you did a UCC-1 and you didn't add your children onto it, you could use a UCC three to add them onto your UCC one. That's what a UCC three is for. So when you look at it, you'll see up here. You see up here. You got a continuation, amendment, assignment. You got different things that it's used for. And down here, collateral. 
You can delete collateral or you can add collateral. See collateral change, all right? So you can add collateral. And so the collateral that be added would be your children. What, what I'm asking is, if you want to discharge a debt for a friend or family member using this process. Yes, you could do it for a family member. Okay. Yes, you could. You file UCC3, correct? You file a UCC3 because you've issued an instrument where you're making an correct. assignment exactly. over someone. So yes, it would be a three. So now that, <laughs> that means that friend or family member, they lose, they, they can't put a claim on that amount since you use your own private exemption account, right? To, to uh, set up the... It's like saying that you wrote a check. If your, Can your family member, if, 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 if your family member have a mortgage that's fifty thousand dollars, they come to you because you rich and say pay it off, and you write a check to the mortgage company. Are they gonna have a claim on anything, or do you? No, you have the claim. Right. It's no different with this. You you the one issuing the instrument. You have the claim. It's your instrument. You're the issuer. But they, they, they're they, the they but they'll remain the holder in due course, right? On the for the property. You're the holder in due course as long as you do this right here. See, this has to be attached to this. All right, hold on for a second. Let me show y'all something. Let me show you something. Because I see where this is going. Because y'all want to jump ahead and start talking about discharging the debt. So I'm going to let you look at this real quick, but I'm not talking about this today. I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to go step by step like I've always been doing. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you this real quick. All right. All right, you can see right here. This is something I'm doing for myself personally. All right, and you can see I got the EIN number of the person that I'm, um, I'm about to hit. Okay, so right here, you're going to see where it says in the special instructions, it's gonna tell you, all right? See enclosed right here at number four, contract dated July, whatever instrument and form UCC3 must remain attached to this instrument. I'm gonna print this on the back of it, all of this. I'm really still uh, putting it together. I'm actually creating a new kind of a uh, instrument and everything. But this is what number four says, okay? The form UCC3 must remain attached to this instrument. So what has to be, what is, what the reason that you are attaching this UCC3 to this negotiable instrument is to give notice to any subsequent holder. You, this, this is the thing that's going to be attached. You're going to have this in your package and any debt that you discharge. You're letting them know that I already have a claim on this instrument is down here when it's an international bill of exchange. I, right? you already, you already then put this in here, filed it. It has a file number. OK, on your negotiable instrument, you can put the file number right there on the instrument. All right. A filing number, a UCC number. You can put it on here somewhere. But the UCC three is attached to it, letting them know that if you need to go and check the commercial chamber, I've already have a claim on that instrument, making me the holder in due course of it. Why is it important to be the holder in due course? All right. Because. All of it claim you got all rights and remedies, personal and real. You don't they, there ain't no personal defenses that can be used against you. You're still subject to real defenses. But to the collection of that particular instrument, it comes back to you. So you're the holder in due course. And that's under UCC 3-306. Uh, so right, when you go to UCC 3-306, it tells you claims to an instrument. All right, you gotta have a claim on it. Okay. It has to be a claim on the instrument, man. Okay, claims to an instrument. You have to have notice. So the commercial chamber is used to give notice. A person taking an instrument other than the person having rights of a holder in due course is subject to a claim, a property, or possessory right in the instrument. 
or the proceeds, including claim to rescind the no negotiation and recover the instrument or its proceeds. A person's having rights of a holder in due course takes free of the claim to the instrument. All right. So you're the holder in due course, but the only way you can be the holder in due course is when you study UCC 3-302, which tells you what you have to do to be a holder in due course, which is right here, 302, holder in due course, right here. And what at? Right here in five and six. Okay, you got to get without notice of any claim described in 3306 and without notice in any party as a defense or claim in recoupment. So you have to, if, if, if you don't give a notice, when they get that instrument, they become the holder in due course. You see, it says without notice. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you don't, if they, you don't have no notice and you get a, a negotiable instrument and, and they hand, they become the holder in due course. They ain't got to give you back shit. So that's why you ain't getting your instrument back. For all those who want to know why they don't give me my instrument back, they kept it. Now you know. They know what they're doing. You don't. This has to be on every instrument that you fill out. You're going to have a UCC3 attached to it. Every one that you submit. Are there any other questions? Because I'm not going to. We're going to do tomorrow. I'm going to try to make these webinars like an hour, hour and 30 minutes every night. I'm not keeping y'all up all night. We are just gonna do one step at a time every every night till we get through it all. All right. So is this good right here? Anybody got any other questions? So I gave y'all some to research, something to study, something to look for. Okay. We went through the notice right here. This is your second step. Tomorrow we're gonna do a, uh, uh, the third one, which is uh, your notice and opportunity to cure. It's not very long either. And we'll talk some more. But you're gonna hand this whole package over to the notary. Okay. The notary is going to get your bill of exchange. She's going to get your UCC three. Matter of fact, this would be in here too. your UCC three. Uh, right here on your certificate of knowledge to be your UCC. UCC three. All right. Those things right there, they get the package and everything. They're going to get a bill. Of, they're going to get your notice of acceptance. The, uh, your payoff statement, which is going to be accepted for value over it, an international bill of exchange, and a UCC3. That's it. So the, the, so the first package you're going to give the notary, when you can finish constructing your whole administrative, you always do your whole administrative process up front. You hand the notary all three documents. You hand her everything at once. You don't do one part and come back to the notary and give her the next part and then come back to the notary and give her the next part. No, you give her the entire administrative process at one time. All right. All right. She's going to have the certificate of non-response, your notice of acceptance and your notice of default and opportunity to cure. She's going to have a whole package. She's going to mail this out first on this date. You're going to date everything. And then your notice of the default and opportunity to uh, cure is going to be 10 days after this. She has to mail that everything at exactly at that time. At the end of 21 days, she's going to uh, notarize your certificate of non-response. And that's your judgment and estoppel. She is the witness. A notary. Did you see that uh, Wozni, he kept saying the notary did it? The notary did it. All right. You go back over here. You see what this man said? This is his initial financing statement. Okay, notary public. Okay, a certificate of dishonor protest has been given by Michael A. Stoddard, notary public. Okay, but for you to do that properly, the notary has to be a witness of everything, not some things, everything. Am I can if I confuse somebody on that? Hmm. Anybody didn't get that? Anybody didn't understand what I just said? Hold on, let me take down everybody's hand. Anybody not understand what I just said? This is not complicated. Ricardo, your mic is still open. Yeah. No, no, no. When you re when you reset, I think everybody's hands goes up automatically. No, my hand's not up. It's down. Okay. All right. Uh Quentin Riley, you got your mic is open, brother. Man, this is some deep. Man, I, I'm I'm speechless, man. 
Well, look like I can go read some more, some more new stuff. Oh man, let me tell you, this guy right here, this whole thing, I ain't even finished researching everything, but it's so it's so chock full of information. I want to get to how they monetize the companies. Cause it looked like, you know, everybody accused in th in this game, there is a lot of fraud. Okay. In the monetization of instruments, there is a lot of fraud. However, I understand what the attorney did. Hey, like, look, I got substance in mind. As long as I did my process correctly, that's a valid fucking lien. I got to lean on all they property and I can sell it. And I gave you notice and I'm going to sell it. And he sold it. You've been selling it. Dang. I saw that, man. I, I, I just got my mouth wide open over here, man. Like, no pause, but man. That, that's... And what I love about this is an attorney doing it. And he did it because he was, he was incensed about the courts. That's what this whole thing right here is. He is right. I mean, you need to read this right here. A letter to the Supreme Court Judge Jerry Alexander. Y'all, y'all Google this right now. And y'all need to read this and study this. So when y'all go and read the other articles, because you know, it's gonna be people talking about this guy is oh, he was disbarred from the uh uh, you know, they saying he got a bond uh from a lien that from a disbarred attorney. But yeah, look what he got disbarred for. He was uncovering corruption of the judicial system. Yep. I will That's be why they just barred him. They just barred him because he we were putting their ass on blast. I will finish that document tonight. Soon this soon this webinar over, I'm going sh straight to that. This right read. here, that document. I want everybody to read this, so y'all can really study this because you need to. Because when you see what they talking around the world, you're gonna see through all the deception that's going on. This is an attorney. This is an attorney. Who did what we're doing? Man, man, man. I, that's all I had, bro, man. Good job. Uh, great quality. Sound perfect. Can't get no better. All right. Hey, y'all. That's it for me tonight. I will see y'all tomorrow night, same time. You know how to log in. You go to you go to your back office. The link to the webinar is gonna be on all y'all pages. You ain't got call, email, nobody like that is right there. Okay. The recording will be right there on your dashboard. It'll be a link for your recording. All right. When y'all come in, all right. You'll see you'll see you'll see the link. Okay. So y'all have to contact me or nothing like that. I posted the the recording from Saturday. Is in your back. You a member? You a log in to your member. You, you, you know, if you ain't a member, I don't give copies to anything. People not members. You a member? My membership, they get all that. They paying. They get everything. All right. So you paying for it? I make a copy available for you. I usually have it up by the next day. You can go and re-review uh, re this. All right. Because I'm working very hard on making training videos and things like that. Take up a lot of time. But anyway, that's my presentation for tonight. Tomorrow we're gonna do. Uh, notice the default opportunity to cure, and we'll go over the instructional letter. Also, your special instructions also. All right? And that's it for me tonight. I'll see y'all tomorrow night. All right? Peace. Peace.